Hi, welcome to Bonita's Kitchen and thank you for joining us. What I'm going to be making today is a delicious baller of butternut squash soup and a tasty western sandwich. And today's recipe is a viewer's request and thank you for suggesting that. And I said a while back that I wanted to make a few more soups because we're still in the time of the year where we need to have soup. And of course, what I'm going to pair it with is a Western sandwich. And I can remember as a kid growing up having this one, my dad used to enjoy making it for us. He wanted us to have different tastes, different cultural foods. Of course, it's not uh, a sandwich we would make here in Newfoundland and Labrador, but we've all enjoyed it from time to time. So if that interests you and you like to make some, stick around and let's get started. So what we'll start with first is preparing our butternut squash. It's probably a medium size squash and wash it first, clean off the outer, um, uh, the outer skin and then cut it in half. I'm going to be working on this a little minute because I don't want it to roll. You just want to watch your fingers. You don't want to have them in the way. So pretty much cut it in half first. After you've done that, open it up. On the inside you got your seeds and your pulp. So we want to remove these seeds first. And we'll put it in a bowl to the side. And just toss it into the bowl. Now you can keep the seeds and roast them. You could have it there for a garnish, but right now I'm not going to be using that. So uh, what we're going to do first, we're going to... Um, Season the top with some nutmeg and I got about a, qu a quarter of a teaspoonful of nutmeg here and I want to put it on both sides, both sides, each one of the butternut squash. And I want to put some fresh ginger over the top of this one and roast it first. Now uh, you can make this recipe a couple of ways but this is the way that I like doing it because I like to have the butternut squash roasted so just do about a quarter of a teaspoonful of ginger paired to both of the sides of this butternut squash spread it out evenly of course and what you could do with your ginger, if you don't use a lot of it all the time, put it in your freezer and keep it there. Take it out as you need it and it'll stay nice and fresh and it won't wilt away. Um, we need a pan and a piece of parchment paper. I'm just going to just scrunch it up a little and we're going to put, get all that ginger there, put the butternut squash down on its back. We're going to be roasting this in the oven on a 350 degree Fahrenheit heat for 60 minutes. We're going to go 30 minutes this way, then the half ways through, flip it over and do 30 minutes that way. So I'm going to put this in the oven and I'm going to show you what's next. So now what you're going to need as well, you're going to need some vegetables. You're going to need a full onion, a stick of celery, a medium carrot cut up. I got a parsnip here, they're nice and sweet, very tasty. And I got down here somewhere one potato. I'm going to take this and put it in a um, medium saucepan and get this cooking on the stovetop just until fork tender. So pretty much when you get your vegetables in there, pour in some hot water and then we're going to toss in about a half a teaspoonful of sea salt and the vegetable broth from this is going to be the broth that you're going to use for your butternut squash soup so that's about four cups there 
okay so while our butternut squash is roasting and our potatoes is boiling our potatoes our vegetables is boiling over there on a medium heat we're going to get working on that western sandwich getting back to a little little story about it like I was saying my dad used to make this he worked away years ago on the mainland he was a steel worker but when he retired he became an organic farmer and I've talked about that on, on shows we've had before so he was always interested in food and he loved making it and eating, eating it of course so this was one of his favorite sandwiches and one that my mom loves as well so what we'll do now is go over to our stovetop and we'll get making this western sandwich so what we'll do first is put two eggs in our bowl because we're going to mix all this together so I'm going to make a sandwich for two the soup is for four or if you want it extra soup um, we're going to just mix those eggs lightly so if it's just going to be the two because that means I can have two bowls two bowls of soup for you for sure mm. and what we're going to do the seasonings I'm going to use is my salt pepper and onion powder and it's about a quarter of a teaspoonful of each one so pop it on in to the egg you know you're gonna have two bowls mm -hmm. I'm gonna be adding in here as well a quarter of a cup of milk or cream about a half a cup of chopped ham I'm using a black forest ham here today but you use whatever you got available you don't have to be going out looking for anything some tomato green pepper and some orange peppers and you use as much as you like on that it's um, it's up to you but that's about um, about a half a cup all in total of three of it together so mix that up lightly that's all you need to do and we're going to be putting in there some butter and a little bit of olive oil and we're just going to let that melt down lightly there so we're going to be putting in half of this mixture into this bowl because we're making two of these western sandwiches we only need half in there first so I'm going to take my green onion from the water I usually like to keep it in the water just and it keeps growing if you're only just cutting a few little pieces off like this put it back in the water and it'll continue to grow and you can keep that there keep changing water daily so pretty much what I'm doing here now is just letting this start to fry till it's golden brown on one side flipping it to the other side so what we need to do while we're waiting is put two pieces of bread right now to and I'm using homemade white bread I'll share that link with you and we get this toasting to get it nice and brown and ready for this delicious western sandwich just move it around so it don't stick and to speed up cooking and of course for melting cheese and etc put a little lid over it like this just to help it cook that little bit faster and more and then we'll flip it over okay looks like our toast is done as well got my camera all steamed up oh yeah <laughs> so now I'm going to flip over our western omelet really is what it is there now and our toast is absolutely delicious ready to make um, our sandwich and then I'm going to sprinkle some shredded cheese over the top and then put the lid back on again to melt it that's it almost done our western sandwiches are ready you just got to plate them up but right now I'm going to pull that uh, butternut squash out of the oven he's baked and we'll scoop it out so 30 minutes on one side and then the other 30 minutes baked off on the other side and just look at these roast it perfectly so now what I need to do is scoop it out usually I wait a little while to do that so as I can hold it but I'm going to see what I can do here now so as we can get this piping hot scooping it out so 
pretty much all you're going to do is scoop all of this delicious pulp out of the butternut squash. I mean, waiting for it to cool down a little bit would be better. And then I'll show you what's next. What a beautiful smell, this butternut squash, got that nuttiness, got the cinnamon you can smell, the nutmeg there. So pretty much just scoop whatever you can get out of there and you can pull some more out after. And now I'm going to show you what you're going to do next. So I'm going to take the lid off of this vegetables and we're going to take all of these vegetables and put over here with the butternut squash. And all of this delicious goodness is going to be blended up together. Plus the broth, the vegetable broth from these vegetables are going to be blended up together. So now I hope I'm making you guys hungry just to make yours delicious. So you either need an handheld mixer or you could use your um, blender with a, a glass um, cover and uh, I, I guess a glass holder to put it into and that will uh, work out perfect. So I'm just going to blend this up lightly now without pouring it all over Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so like I was saying, it may, it'll make a little bit of a mess, but just blend it all together. So we're going to gradually pour in some of that broth. It was four cups of broth, so put in about two cups to start. And depending on how thin or how thick you want your butternut squash soup, put in a chunk of butter, probably a tablespoonful or a little bit more, a quarter of a teaspoonful of onion powder, half a teaspoonful of black pepper, half a teaspoonful of sea salt or less, and I'm going to be putting in there one garlic clove pressed. And that's it. Just turn on your blender again and slowly mix it together. All right, so depending on again how thick or thin you want it, your soup, but this is the way I like it. Just look at this, the texture is just absolutely amazing. So now I'm going to scoop some up. So what we're going to do now, we're going to ladle up this delicious butternut squash soup. Then we're going to make our Western sandwich, pair them together. I'm going to have a taste. And then I'm going to <laughs> eat. And then you're going to eat. And I can't wait for you guys to make this. It smells amazing in here. And this is such a comfort food. Oh my gosh. Can't wait. Now, of course, at this point, you can taste your soup and you see if it's something else you need to add there. But you know what? I'm satisfied with this taste and consistency. You can keep this on the small saucepan and let it keep warm. Um, we're going to put a little dollop of sour cream on the top. I just put my spoon there and just use your knife and make a little bit of a design back and forth. Of course, you can make a design whatever way you want. A couple of pieces of croutons on there and a little dash of that salt and pepper just for taste. Now, I'm going to go over here and we got our mother's mustard sauce. I'm going to put on one side and we're going to put some mayo on the other side. I'm trying to do this quick so that you get to see it. Just finish doing that. And then over here, let's get the rest there. We're going to take this nice piece of that Western almond and put there. I'm going to cut it in half. I mean, okay, that's definitely not. <laughs> I mean, when it's chow, chow time. When my dad used to make this for us, we would be just vibrating, waiting for it to be served, and then of course, 
No, no she's celery. Unlo unlucky, man. Yeah. That, well, your dad is not making them now, but I'm in the kitchen. You are in the kitchen. This is what we're going to have here now. And I'm going to whip off Raymond's, of course. He's thinking he's going to have this one, but maybe mm -hmm. he will. Got our soup there ready to go. You could put another little bit extra butter on there to cream it up another little bit. And that's it. As good as it get. I can't wait for you to make it. I can't wait. I'm ready for a taste. Oh my gosh, this butternut squash soup. I hope our viewers that asked for this uh, soup is excited today. Mm. Oh, the nuttiness of that butternut, the, the creaminess of all of those ingredients put together, the vegetables, the taste of the parsnip, I could taste it all. Drop the fork, delicious. Now I'm gonna have a taste of this delicious western <laughs> Don't you sandwich. dare. That's mine. Oh my gosh. Just look. <laughs> uh oh, I'm drooling. Mm. I think my dad would be proud of me. So good. Delicious. Two thumbs up. Now I got my mouth cleaned, my, my coat cleaned, because I was just full of this butternut squash and Raymond wouldn't even tell me. <laughs> but that's yeah. typical. That's typical. We know that. Anyway, you guys, if you're excited to make our delicious soup today, comfort food soup, butternut squash soup, and a Western sandwich, the recipe is going to be posted below this video. Also, the subscribe button is there. If you're a first time viewer on our channel, please do. We thank you in advance. Also, if you can't get the recipe in under this video, send me an email at bonnetakitchen at gmail.com. I'll be happy to send you that uh, recipe. As well, you can visit us on our website, www.bonnetaskitchen.com. Oh, and Bonita, don't forget, Bonita's photo album. Yes. Once a month we usually if try to get one to out. Say, if you make this recipe and you want us to send us a picture of your delicious meal, send it to that uh, link, bonitakitchen at gmail.com. As I'm stirring my soup here, it's absolutely delicious. Keep it warm in the saucepan on a, a low heat. If you don't eat it all at one time, which doubtfully, highly doubtfully, mm -hmm. it won't be all gone in one meal. But if it is, isn't, put it in a mason jar and you could uh, put it in your fridge for a few days there and have it at any time. You don't have to do the sealing process. Just pour it in, seal it, let it come to room temperature, put it in the, in the fridge. So also, I don't want to take any more of your time. We know it's precious. We thank each and every one of you for spending a little bit of it air with us today. We can't wait for you to make this delicious recipe. Don't forget to click and like and share with your family and friends so they too can enjoy this recipe and all of our recipes to date. So on behalf of myself, Raymond, and our team here at Bonita's Kitchen, from our kitchen to yours, have a wonderful day. If you're visiting our beautiful province of Newfoundland, Labrador, don't forget to check out the town of Carbonair and join us again on Bonita's Kitchen. Always an open door, Bonita's Kitchen to yours, Bonita's Kitchen.